this meeting to order of the Sacramento Public Library Authority on September 23rd, 20, uh, 2021 at 3 p.m. Uh, Recording token, in progress. Angela Gashby, Bobby Singh Allen, Donna Tolley. Here. Eric Guetta. Here. Garrett Gatewood. Let's see here. Garrett Gatewood. Here. <laughs> Kevin Spees. Present. My Vang. Patrick Kennedy. Here. Bill Serna. Rich Desmond. Here. Rick Jennings. I'm here, Madam Clerk. Sean Loloey. Angelique Ashby. Uh, Heather, I'm here for Supervisor Phil Serna. Okay. I think Angelique just came in. Angelique Ashby? Yes, here. Thank you. Fantastic. And Rick. Oh, Rick. Tim Schaefer? Here. And Karina Talamantes. And here. we're good. We're good, Mr. Schaefer. Here, I think if uh, if you uh, if you need to uh, uh, address the conflict there. So. And Sue Frost is here now. Fantastic! Oh, we're all here. Very good. Great. Well, thank you, Madam Clerk. If uh, folks could uh, please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, if you don't mind reading the uh, meeting statement. Meeting of the Sacramento Public Library Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T UVerse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.satcounty.net. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, September 25th at 4 p.m. on channel 14 and can also be viewed on Metro Cable 14's YouTube channel. The meeting will also be recorded via Zoom. A DVD copy will be available upon request no later than two weeks following today's meeting. The full agenda, including reports, is available on the library website at www.saclibrary.org. Members of the audience wishing to address the board should raise their hand in the Zoom program. Please speak clearly when addressing the board and state your name for the record. Comments are limited to three minutes so that everyone may be heard. Please also note that participation in this teleconference via telephone rather than the Zoom app may result in your telephone number being visible to the public during the live broadcast and later telecast of this meeting. That's great, thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Um, well, all right, well, let's get to it. Let's go on the uh, second item on the agenda. Madam Clerk. Item two, public comments on matters not on the agenda. And I don't see any hands raised and I got no messages. Great. Well, seeing no one, uh, no one from the public wishing to speak on matters not on the agenda, Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and move on to item number three. Item three, presentations. All right. Well, welcome, friends of the Sacramento Public Library, Ms. Karen Wilson. Welcome, welcome again here. Oh, you're on mute. Uh, President uh, Karen Wilson, you're on mute. There we go. I am um, struggling for my mute there. Thanks very much for having me today. Well, the friends, of course, are excited about the grand reopening of the Orange Vale Library with the community room named in honor of longtime friend Jane Wise. That's very, uh, it's a great moment for uh, the friends in Orange Vale. So thanks for that, for everyone's part in getting that going. Our biggest project uh, underway right now is the Young Readers Fund, honoring our wonderful library director, Rivka Sass, and nurturing future young readers. So thanks so much to those of you who've already responded to our invitation to join our honorary committee for the campaign to raise funds to endow the fund. Uh, so that would be members Ashby, Frost, Guerra, Kennedy, Singh, Allen, and Vong, and Ms. Talamantes as well. Thanks you all for your positive response. I hope I've mentioned everyone. 
And thanks to members Ashby and Kennedy for your very generous donation so far. If your email got lost or our email, email to you got lost, and I've heard from a couple of people that it has, we welcome you still to join the honorary committee and help us get the word out about the Young Readers Fund and encourage people to participate in whatever way they can. It's a great cause and a, we like to think a great way to get the community together behind something positive. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Karen. And thank you to all those who participated and also for those who haven't, there's still an opportunity. So uh, appreciate that. Uh, okay, Madam Clerk, we have our second presentation. And it's Matt Hill and Alan Worthy. And I just wanna mention that uh, in these days of COVID, libraries have always been that resource that helps connect people with uh, technology. But we've added so many things and we have our two superstar guys here, Alan and Matt, to share some information about things that you may not even know we have. So they'll just take a few minutes of your time because I think this is so important right now as we hopefully get back to normal. Take it away, Matt. All right, good afternoon, Thanks, Matt. Hello, thanks, Eric. And thanks, Rev. Gov, for the uh, introduction um, and for the time. So I'm going to share my screen here. I've got a presentation. Let's see if I can get this right. I can never get a PowerPoint presentation right. Does everyone see that big? Perfect. All right. So just introduce myself real quick. I'm Matt Hill. I've been with the library for about eight or nine years. Been working with e-resources for six plus of those. Um, and so we have a lot of online resources, just some quick fun facts about those. We have over 60 online resources and that includes, um, gonna jump to my third PowerPoint, a pretty diverse collection. We have some, we have research tools, uh, eBooks and e-audio books, financial literacy, product research, like consumer reports. We have auto repair manuals online. We have a pretty robust LGBTQ collection that we just added, uh, learning to play instruments, uh, products for beginning readers and early readers, a streaming music concerts, live music concerts that have been recorded over the last 40 years available to our patrons, um, and streaming TV and movies. So we cover a lot of different uh, uh, subject areas on our online resources. So just for fiscal year 2021, we had 360,000 sessions. That means someone logged into a resource and used it. Um, and based on the cost of all of the resources combined, that averages out to about a dollar a session. And uh, personally, I set uh, the success rate of an online resource at about $2. So that's great. So anytime a, a patron logs in, it's basically, it, it's a dollar. So that it's a really good usage and a really good interaction with our uh, community. Um, for our eBooks and audiobooks, we use Overdrive and Libby. Um, that's Overdrive is the company, Libby is the main app that our patrons use. And in 2020, the calendar year, we had 2.7 million ebooks and e audiobooks checked out. Um, part of that has to do with, you know, COVID and the closing the libraries. We still gave access to our patrons for ebooks and e audiobooks, and they could continue reading. Um, this year, so far this year, we're at 2.2 million checkouts. So we're on par to actually hit probably about 3.3 3 to 3.6 3 million. And that puts us actually in the top 10 most circling libraries in the world because Overdrive is a worldwide Oregon company. Um, I think it actually puts us right around number six. And like I was talking about with Libby, they are an amazing company to work with. They put customers first, they put our patrons first. They have a great uh, service that we were actually a beta and we're the num first library to add this was instant digital cards. And what that means is if our patrons or the community don't have a library card with us yet, they can type in their phone number in the app and it'll give them instant access to our entire collection of eBooks and the audiobooks um, for a year. And after, once they get towards the end of the year, it pops up a message and asks them to come into our, one of our 28 locations and get a full access card and be able to enjoy 
all of our services, physical and digital. Um, we have some great partnerships with school districts that uh, they have their own app called Sora. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Libby, but for schools. And we have a partnership with Leroy Green Academy, Westlake Charter, Center High School, Robo Elementary, and all of Sac City Unified. And that provides access to our collection of overdrive materials through their app. And it filters to only age appropriate material. Um, so that's a great uh, community partnership. We also just added magazines. Um, our original magazine subscription service had about 100 magazine titles in it. This new subscription provided us 3,600 different titles in 20 different languages. Um, English, Spanish, French, German, Chinese, Russian, et cetera. And it, it's like top level magazine titles like The Economist, New Yorker, uh, National Geographic, Us Weekly. Um, and Overdrive has also ventured into the database research world. So they have Craftsy now, which is, um, it's, a, it's a resource for accessing uh, craft materials and activities and videos and learning how to sew and, and knit and do artsy, craftsy stuff. Um, Quello Concerts is that one I referred to earlier. Uh, it's actually a consumer product that if you were to go to their website, you could subscribe monthly. And this is free to our patrons with library cards. Um, you can go in, you can check it out, and you can stream concerts. So almost every Friday night, I go on a Quello and I throw a concert up on the TV and we watch it while cooking dinner. So it's, it's a really cool resource. We also have great courses, uh, video and audio, educational courses. And then we have another one that's not on the screen, but it's called Artist Works where you can learn an instrument or how to sing, how to do DJ work, all from world-renowned artists. And just some quick database highlights. Uh, Hoopla, that's, it's sort of like Overdrive. It has eBooks, e-audio books, streaming music, TV shows, streaming movies. Uh, the, all the music albums are same day as street release. So if you were to go into the store to buy the album, uh, you could stream it same day on Hoopla. Um, and that purchase going with Hoopla and Overdrive together created a really robust collection that crosses more publishers than just having the one partnership with Overdrive. Um, Sacramento B E edition. This is the full historic archive and the daily E edition of the paper. The daily paper is the most popular resource we have with Sacramento Public Library or E resource. It's three cents per use. That's how many checkouts we get of this resource per day uh, in a year. Um, and we have a full historic digital archive, which is completely searchable, um, which I'm proud to say I, I, we're one of few libraries that has a complete collection in digital format of their local paper. And for lifelong learners, we have Gale courses, which is kind of like a six week online college course. You actually have a real instructor. You do, you complete uh, lessons and papers and forums posts, and you get a little certificate at the end. Um, that says you completed this course. So that, that's good um, resume fodder. Uh, we also have LinkedIn Learning. That's on-demand trainings and office products, Adobe, photography, coding, and over 120 other subject areas. Uh, we have world language learning. Over 164 different languages can be learned with us through three different platforms. We have ESL learning in 60 different languages. Um, and those platforms also include citizenship prep for those new arrivals in both Spanish and English. Um, and then financial literacy, we, we recently added Weiss Financials, a uh, big product name there. It includes stock market information, how to manage debt, renting and buying a home, retirement planning. There's a great Medigap tool on there for learning how to navigate Medicare. It's a really complicated system. And that's all free to our patrons. Just a few more. And I'm only touching on maybe a third of the 60 that we have. Um, so these are some great ones here is Consumer Reports. This is the full online uh, website that you would access if you paid a monthly subscription to. Again, free to our patrons. JobNow and VetNow, that gives assistance to our, our uh, out of work and our vets. Uh, you can get live support, connect with a live uh, Resume builder, someone who can do some interview training with you. They can work with you on your resume. Ancestry.com, yet another one of those 
pay subscription services that we provide for free. New York Times, uh, that was provided by the State Library, but we're proud to provide that to Sacramento County as well. And that gives you full access to the New York Times Daily and the entire website. Um, novelist, Novelist is great for book recommendations. So if you, if you love a certain author or a certain series, you can type that in on there. And it'll give you series read-alikes or author read-alikes. So if you're a big Stephen King fan, you can type in his name. And it'll, it'll pop up with other authors that you might like to read. Um, and iVox, that's another new addition for us. Those are really, it's a really great mobile app you can install on your phone or iPad. And it's a picture book that actually pops up, becomes 3D and it's interactive and it reads it to you. And it, it gives those young readers something to kind of that tactile uh, learning while they're being read to. And the last one, our student research tools. We have a really robust collection of tools for our K through kindergarten through uh, community college level learners. We have a Gale research package that covers over 20 different databases uh, covering history, science, human anatomy, uh, biograph biographies, world issues, um, modern law. A great one in there called Opposing Viewpoints. It gives you the pros and cons of different subjects around the world. And then we have different research centers. So a young researcher can enter the younger version one, K through five, and kind of learn how to research. And then if you need the more robust, if you're in middle school, you can get to the six through eight level one. And then if you're a more advanced researcher, maybe a high school student or a, or a college student, you can use that nine through 12th grade research center. And it kind of pulls all the different topic areas together. It's easy to do searches. We also have a great collection of scholastic research tools. Those are geared through the K through five level. They're a lot more picture based. Um, they also have a lot of one-to-one -one eBooks of our scholastic nonfiction materials that we have on the shelves and the branches. And one of my favorite ones to pitch is Homework Help Now. Um, you can connect to a live tutor for K through college level uh, subject areas. So English, math, science, history, social studies, writing. Let's say you're a fifth or a sixth grader working in algebra and you just don't understand a question. You can hop on there, connect to a live tutor. You can draw in like a digital whiteboard the problem and they'll work you through it until you have it figured out. Uh, there's a writing lab in there. You can upload your paper and someone will review it, edit and send it back to you. And within 24 hours, you can fix the mistakes. You can change the edits and send it back again and have it proofread as many times as you want until it's perfect and you can turn it into your teachers. Um, and that's it for me. I'm gonna hand it off to Alan Worthy unless anyone has any questions about any of the online resources. Okay, thanks Matt. Um, um, I'm Alan Worthy and um, I've been with the library for 13 years now. Seems like just yesterday I showed up, but uh, um, I wanna talk about the, the actual in-branch stuff that we do to um, to help bridge that digital divide. And I think of us as like one of the first steps in bridging that digital divide with our connectivity in library branches. Um, we have gigabit connectivity in 27 of 28 locations. Um, we're very proud of that fact that um, you'll never see a, um, a loading internet slow in, in a library. Um, and that always hasn't been the case. So we've worked really hard with um, the IT staff to um, provide the best connectivity we can. We have that 10 gigabit connectivity to the internet. So there's no, no downtime. And uh, um, we have over 110 wireless access points that um, people use throughout the 27 branches. Um, and at times we've actually seen up to like 900 users on those wireless access points. So it's a pretty robust access that we provide in the branch in terms of connectivity. Next slide, Matt. Um, and then as far as access um, in the branches, we have uh, um, over 800 um, public ASCX computers, everything from desktops to notebooks to Chromebooks to tablets to lots of other things. Um, patrons use these for um, 
everything from finding jobs, using the databases like Homework Help, um, applying for benefits, and new arrivals can do lots of great things on them, including checking those football scores from the home country. Um, that's what I like to do. So, um, and a lot more, a lot more. So, I, I bet Matt that I could get a soccer reference into this presentation. So, um, we have a uh, 160 catalog computers that use uh, that use uh, all those databases um, that Matt Matt talked about. Um, last year we had over 38,000 computer reservations, slightly down due to the to the pandemic, but um, we're still in, seeing good usage. We provide printing in all of the locations, and uh, um, we print printed over uh, 275,000 pages last year. And those are everything from resumes to to benefit applications to the occasional goulash recipe that you want to print and take home. So a little bit of everything. Next one, yeah. Um, some new things that uh, we were rolling out and rolled out this past year. One of the things that we tried during the pandemic was to, um, to deliver um, mobile printing services where uh, um, patrons can print from home or outside the office. And then they can come to the library and pick up those print jobs, either in person or during when the libraries were closed. We actually provided that as a, as a curbside service. Um, really popular, works really well. And again, that's all, everything gets printed there from, from those homework assignments to those recipes again. So um, we also delivered, uh, seven branches have these new um, self-checkout patron um, Pa patron, there's no staff interaction of uh, tablet stations. And uh, um, these are preloaded Android tablets that require, you just scan your library card and you pull the tablet and you get it for the, the, the checkout period for in library use. Um, really cool service. It, it, it knows the level of patron you are. If you're a child, you get delivered a, a child preloaded experience. If you're an adult, you get an adult preloaded experience. Um, we're very happy with those. And um, it's probably one of the most exciting things we've done this year. So um, we're pushing out a lot of mobile hotspots for take home checkout. Um, last year, uh, our partners over at the city of Sacramento provide us with a bunch of uh, um, hotspots that we pushed out and that was really successful. Um, and coming soon, we're gonna, we're gonna push out um, hundreds more um, that we've acquired through a couple of grants through the state library and from the new emergency connectivity fund. Um, so we're excited about getting those out and available to help that again, bridge that digital divide. Um, and then also we're gonna, we're gonna start offering Chromebooks for checkout. And uh, um, I think we have about 500 that we're gonna look to push out fairly soon. And again, those are also funded by grants from the State Library and uh, Emergency Connectivity Fund. Um, and if you have any questions, that's all I got. Great, well, thank you very much. Just uh, never, never uh, ceases to amaze me the endless amount of services that there are here for the library. Um, first, let me see, Madam Clerk, do we have any members from the public wishing to speak on this item? No, we do not. Great, thank you. Let me uh, take it back to the board here. This is just a presentation for our uh, edification. And uh, yes, Garrett Gatewood, Vice Chair. Awesome, excellent. Hey guys, great work. First off, being an IT guy, that is some uh, amazing heavy lifting. I know how hard it is to retrofit and pull across the system, especially in the middle of COVID and uh, a needed services. And I had no idea that we are offering uh, free printing. So the fact that we're the now discount Kinkos is amazing to me. So I will now be using that for all my projects going forward, but uh, that is an amazing offering. And I think we need to blow that one up because I think more and more people know about that, the better. So that's it. Great job, guys. Well, thank you. Um, Alan, thank you very much for that. I think uh, it, it's a great resource, particularly for those who are uh, trying to put together things uh, for whatever there's their family records or, or on the job hunt. Uh, great resource here. Other questions from the board? 
If not, uh, one, one request that I did ask uh, our clerk is that if we could send this information in, in an easy way that can be distributed so that as part of our newsletters, as part of our you know, social media outlets that we do at our local cities and even on our own offices that we can easily disseminate this information out. I know we can find some um, a good chunk of it by going on it, but I think if there was a, a nice little toolkit for the board, uh, this would be helpful. Uh, great. Let's, um, well, Madam Clerk, we'll move on to our uh, next item on the agenda. Item four, executive team report. Thank you. Um, I want to point out a few things to the board. I'll start with um, start marking your calendars now for 2024 when the retrofit of the Elk Grove Library is completed. Uh, we're beginning the conversations with the architect now. There will be some community meetings coming up. Uh, Mayor Singh Allen and Council Member Spees will get that information to you so that we can get the community involved with what they would like to see um, with the library. And uh, as it gets closer, we'll make sure that you all know to uh, plan for a pretty cool event, we hope. Um, I want to mention a couple of other things. As you know, COVID has impacted everything from participation in summer reading. We want kids to keep reading. Those numbers um, are, are climbing back up. Uh, some of you were involved with the Summer Explorers Program, whether it was council member or Chair Guerra and uh, Director uh, Vang helping create, find locations. I know Directors Laloi Vang and uh, Cerna attended the events. There were more than 400 people who came out to parks throughout the area to uh, learn to, for families to experience um, what the library can offer even remotely. We saw a lot of new arrivals. And speaking of new arrivals, um, we'll be participating in the International Rescue Committee uh, meetings that are occurring about how we welcome our new Afghan neighbors, what the library can offer. As Matt pointed out in his presentation, we have a lot of resources that will help people strengthen their English skills or learn English altogether. We have people who speak um, languages that we think will be helpful to new arrivals, and the library is here to help with that. I wanna mention also that we had a very successful summer leadership program with 39 teens who participated in a six week program that was grant funded. Uh, at the end of it, if they made, made it to all the sessions, they earned a $300 stipend uh, that was part of a grant from the California State Library. So we were very pleased about that. So I wanna also mention the, the, that was all the upside to uh, libraries serving the entire community. You'll see in the written report that we've been having some issues uh, in, in several of our libraries, but a particular pain point right now is our Sylvan Oaks Library. Staff have been meeting with uh, the police, with the Parks Department, we've met with the county facilities, um, but the number of incidents in that library have, have just grown exponentially. Um, since we began meeting with uh, one of the advocates from the community who assures us he's trying to reduce the number of incidents when in fact they've uh, more than doubled. And it's, it's, becoming, um, it's becoming frightening in, in the sense that we had a staff person um, and very concerning. A staff person was knocked down last week. Uh, Jared climbed on the roof to check something else out, found a hatchet. Uh, there's a lot of uh, cleanup that has to be done at this particular library. And we, we did a, Karen Leland, who's our security manager, did an analysis. It's costing us about five to $7,000 a month extra in security and cleanup at that library. And um, it's, it's we're, we're hoping, we're hoping that this is going to be, um, that there's still a correction to come with understanding of what the Boise decision actually means. I called the city of Boise, talked with one of the attorneys uh, because we seem to have a different perspective about it. And he was very clear about actions that we can take to keep our entire community safe. Uh, it's my job as library director to give you the good news and the bad news. 
And it's my job as library director to do everything we can to keep our staff safe. They work with the public every day and uh, we don't wanna put them in harm's way. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Jared for a minute because sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words and Jared has some additional information specifically about Sylvan Oaks. And again, it's not the only location right now, it's just a pain point for us. Thank you, Rivka. Um, can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. There we go. Yeah, so I wanna just share a few more of uh, some details about the challenges that we're having at, at Sylvan. And there are many, as Rivka noted, um, our incidents have really climbed through the roof. As you can see, Sylvan, as of last week, has had over 122 incidents. If you look at the system, um, it's usually, it's basically three times uh, the amount. Uh, like Rivka said, we do have challenges across the system, but right now Sylvan is our hotbed. There are real costs to these incidents between five to $7,000 a month, but these are real costs. And these are costs that right now that we're incurring at more than just Sylvan, but locations across the system. So now I wanna give you a glimpse of some of the nightly activity that's occurring there. So this is a, a, a typical evening at Sylvan Oaks. So we have many people gathering, um, gathering for lots of different purposes. Um, in this case here, somebody was having a barbecue um, and excessive litter and loitering going on. And then there's other types of activities that might be going on as well, which are really creating complications for us. Uh, there's also the issue of obstructing access. So these pictures here were taken um, at five in the morning from the computer surveillance system. Uh, there's a lot of different things that go on early in the morning, almost up to the moment that we open to the public, which make it very difficult for the public to access our facility, even including fights. Uh, significant risky behavior going on. Like I said, I was on the roof the other day trying to uh, investigate an issue and we had uh, people who are climbing on the roofs, they're leaving objects on the roof. Um, in addition to, it's also a liability issue, not only for us, but for the county, should somebody fall down and hurt themselves. Uh, litter is out of control, excessive litter every day, which uh, causes, it, which our custodians spend significant amount of time cleaning up as uh, well as branch staff. And this is what meets us every morning. We've also had significant facility damage. Uh, often our lights and our cameras are spray painted. And the picture on the right, uh, the person is carrying away part of our book drop. They busted the book drop, carried away the shelf, and uh, it took us a while to track that down and to fix it. Significant costs associated with it. This is some of the cleaner graffiti that I can show you. Um, uh, but the one on the left, that's been permanently etched into the building and it really just creates many challenges for us. Probably the scariest is we have a lot of facility endangerment. Um, occasionally there are fires. This particular fire was near the door um, as it's starting to get colder. Uh, fire danger is definitely more present. In addition, we've had other problems. The SAC B carrier was threatened with violence. There's been sexual activity, fighting on the property, public nudity, biohazards, uh, we've had some suspected drug activity and we have had a broken entrance door and window. So we have met with the county to discuss uh, security issues as well as the possibility of fencing off the uh, branch. Um, but what we need, we really need help and we need support because we honestly kind of feel like we're in this alone. Uh, we need help to manage the impact of the Boise decision on the library because you know we're, we're spending a lot of significant time and effort um, on trying to manage behaviors that are beyond our control. And in order to provide library services effectively, we need your help. You know, we recently did a incredible refresh of this location in which we invested over two and a half million dollars. And we like to think of Sylvan as really the jewel in our crown. And it's very difficult to provide services when we have all of these activities happening after hours, which are not only impacting staff, but our ability to adequately serve the public. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer questions you might have. Well, this is Tim Schaefer. Um, I certainly, I would love to, uh, to get a copy of your PowerPoint if you wouldn't mind sharing that with me. Um, I am- I'll email it to you. Yes, yes I am. Um, I can't tell you how sorry I am that this is a, that the library is encountering things to this degree. 
Um, and I have been going over myself in the morning and kind of seeing, you know, who's, uh, I go to the gym at five o'clock and I'm coming home at six. And so I swing by there just to kind of take a look and see what's going on. Um, and, and I, I, uh, I can't tell you how much I empathize with, uh, with staff there. There's absolutely no excuse or reason that someone should be going to work and uh, facing this kind of um, abuse. So um, I certainly uh, will take it up with, uh, with um, several of the folks, including the police department and have a discussion with them uh, to see what we can do to address this. I, 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 I almost feel like this has crossed the line and I would like to see um, of all the facilities in, in Citrus sites, there's plenty of other places to, that these folks can camp. Um, they have uh, worn out their welcome at the at the uh, at the, the park and the library there, so uh, I think we. I don't know what kind of legal ground I'm, I'm on, but I certainly like to have that discussion, and potentially just say, "Hey, sorry, uh, Crosswoods Park and um, and and Sylvan uh, Oaks Library are off limits for." Well, thank you, Board Member Schaefer. And uh, what I think what I'll ask here is uh, if uh, staff could follow up with Board Member Schaefer there. And I know it's near the county line, so I'm sure our, our corresponding uh, county supervisor might want to be involved in that too. Um, I want to be careful here. I know we're this is an executive director's report, so um, if council, Sorry. you know, let us know that, that we're, how far we're veering off the Brown Act from an agendized item here. So, um, uh, but uh, to this point, I think uh, if, I, if I could ask uh, uh, Rivka and staff and council, actually, if, uh, if you could follow up with uh, board member Schaefer regarding the situation. And well, if I may, you, if Gary, I may I add, you. we've had uh, council member Schaefer has been fantastic at talking with us and putting us in touch with the right people. The police department has been really helpful and very clear about what we need to do. Everybody's trying, but um, it came to a head for us last week when, when we felt that our staff, that a staff person was put in danger um, for just doing his job. And so we appreciate it. We will continue to follow up. We will continue to work with police and we will continue to keep you all informed. Thank you very much, Rivka. Okay, um, any other questions uh, on this item for uh, staff here? If not, then uh, Madam Clerk, we'll move on to the next item here. Item five, information. The material is in, uh, in your packets there. Any questions for uh, Johnny or the, the, the supporting staff? Seeing none then. Um, Madam uh, Clerk, we'll go on to the next item. Item 6.1, action summary. Item 6.2, patron privacy policy. Item 6.3, procedures for lost, mislaid, and abandoned items. Great. Uh, this is our consent calendar. Uh, uh, let me ask for an action from the board here. So moved. It's been moved by our vice chair, uh, Gatewood. Is there a second? Second. Totally a second. It's been seconded by board member Desmond here. Let me ask, uh, Madam Clerk, are there members of the public signed up to speak on this item? No, they are not. Great. Thank you. Let me bring it back to the board. Any questions from the board on this item? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, uh, if you could please call the roll. Angelique Ashby. Yes. Bobby Singh Allen. Yes. Don Natoli. Aye. Eric Guerra. Aye. Garrett Gatewood. Aye. Kevin Spees. Aye. Mai Vang. Yes. Patrick Kennedy. Pa Patrick Kennedy. May have left. Um, Rich Desmond. Aye. Rick Jennings. Yes. Sean Lolloy. Sean Farmer. Sue Frost. Aye. Tim Schaefer. Aye. Karina Talamantes. Yes. 
that's uh, unanimous with 13 members present. Great, thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our uh, last uh, and final action item of the day. Item seven, fiscal year, item 7.1, fiscal year 21-22 final budget, position control and fee structure. Okay, so thank you, Chair Guerra and members of the board. Um, so we're here to uh, discuss the final budget for fiscal year 21-22, position control and fee structures. Um, so I'll, I'll refer you to the staff report and related exhibits for details. Um, so this budget is mainly highlighting any changes from a May adopted budget that was um, approved by the board back in uh, the month of May. Um, so Heather or Jim, may, may I share the screen please? Yes, you should have capability. So I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into the number, um, but feel free to ask any questions if you want more details or further explanations. Um, uh, our senior budget finance analyst, Kurt Bay is also here to uh, help answer any questions that right. I may have. And Johnny, uh, so, just, just as a reminder, this, this is uh, the budget that we already saw and approved, just making the, uh, the adjustments for the actual numbers. That, that is correct, Chair Gira. So um, this budget was approved back in May um, of 2021, so a couple of months ago. Um, so again, this is mainly to update the numbers um, based on our closing process and um, the uh, final revenues and expenditures that are coming in um, over the last several months uh, from July through, um, actually from June through, um, through now. So um, as, as you see here, this is a, uh, three-year flow of the um, budget summary by fund. Um, so if you look at fiscal year 20, um, these are audited numbers from uh, 2020 um, at 41.8 million in fund balances. Um, so this is total uh, system-wide fund balance. Um, in the next column, these are estimated revenues for fiscal year 2021 and expenditures for um, uh, fiscal year 21 as well too. Um, so we've been working um, how the last couple of months to uh, prepare closing entries, um, uh, adjust, make all the adjusting accrual for revenues and expenditures. Um, so these numbers are almost set. Uh, we are preparing for the upcoming audit within the next couple of weeks. Um, so there may be some slight changes, but I don't foresee any um, major changes to these numbers. Um, so at the end of the day, we're, we're anticipating fund balance to be about 48.5 million. Uh, in, in total uh, system-wide. Um, and then next column is our projected revenues for fiscal year 21-22. And as Chair Guerra mentioned a minute ago, um, uh, we've adopted a budget back in May. So these are just simply updates to any new revenue projections or any expenditures that we um, anticipate for uh, fiscal year 22. Um, so revenues, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the detail um, in a bit, but uh, total revenues we're projecting to be at about 50, uh, $53 million combined and expenditures at $56.2 million. Um, next column to your right is uh, cash flow and economic uncertainty reserves um, balances. So $10.3 million for uh, county city funds, um, City of Sacramento Fund, $2.5 million, uh, $1 million for parcel tax X and measure B about almost $400,000. And our final column, these are on, uh, on reserve fund balances. Um, so at, at about 13.9 million for um, the county fund, uh, 7 million for city of Sacramento, uh, 3.4 million for parcel tax X, and almost a million for measure B. Um, and then we have uh, a technology replacement fund at 1.6 million and other um, smaller funds, um, including uh, donations and requests at about 4.2 million. So a combined of uh, 31, uh, almost 31.1 million in on reserve fund balance. And keep in mind, on reserve, um, it's just that we haven't pulled into economic uncertainties, but there are um, restrictions for donations, requests, and so forth. So those are uh, numbers within the uh, 31.1 million. Um, any questions on the schedule? I don't see any hands raised here. So hearing none, um, I will go ahead and move on to exhibit A3, 
Um, so these are our revenue projections. And as, as I mentioned a minute ago, um, we're anticip anticipating at about 53 million combined in uh, total revenue. So here's our projection, so 53 million. And the only two changes that we are recommending at this point is um, a slight change to the county property tax uh, contributions. And this is mainly due to the con continued strong real estate market. Uh, we check with the, the county assessor and uh, we're comfortable at uh, projecting at 28 point, uh, almost 29 million in uh, county contributions. And then on the um, city side, the gallery, as you know, uh, we use that facility for um, cooling centers, um, warming center, um, and then other needs. Um, there's, there will also uh, flood and water uh, situations at the gallery as well, too. Uh, so normally we project at about um, 450,000 in, in a normal year where we have weddings, proms, um, you know, graduations and so forth. Um, but with the COVID closures and other uh, uses, uh, we dropped it down to 150,000 back in May. So when the board adopted the budget, uh, this is a really low projection that we have as well, too. Um, and then in checking with uh, Jared and facilities um, and determining that uh, the gallery is not going to be open for um, the public use in terms of weddings and uh, proms and things of that nature, uh, we like to scale it down another 50% of uh, what we budgeted back in May. So um, projecting at about 75,000 and um, even th with this amount, it's still a very optimistic um, budget um, because we, you know, things are changing as we, you know, go go forward from day to day. So hopefully, um, we can start reopening and um, uh, have those uh, big events um, as as we have in the past. Um, so those are two changes to the revenues. I'm not a whole lot of changes that we're comfortable with other projections for Measure B and also tax X as well too. <clears throat> um, so about 53 million in uh, total revenues. Any questions on revenues? So let's move on to expenditures. Um, so expenditures, we are at about 56.2 million, <clears throat> excuse me, 56.2 million. Um, so roughly 2 million in uh, uh, additional budget from a May adopted budget from 54.2 to 56.2. Um, so of the 2 million increase, um, 600,000 is for um, county fund expenditures. Um, so this includes a $150,000 uh, carryover for the um, uh, beautiful Orangeville refresh project. Um, so mainly the carryover is to, to uh, pay um, additional invoices that, that have come through over the last couple of months after we um, ended June 30th. Um, and then also there's a $5,000 in shared cost distribution. Um, so that includes a um, budget carryover for the bookmobile, um, added positions, and the Sacramento News and Review building that the city of Sacramento had just uh, recently acquired. Um, and so what we like to do is uh, pull some IT cables, um, infrastructure needs, uh, including furniture to, um, uh, to move some staffing there on a temporary basis until the city have a, an opportunity to uh, put um, plans together, the re design re reviews and uh, plan for the uh, tenant improvements for um, North, the North Sacramento Library branch. Um, and then 1.3 million is for the city of Sacramento uh, fund expenditure increase. Um, so 450,000 of that 1.3 is for uh, security upgrades. And this is just a carryover from uh, fiscal year 21. Um, so again, with the supply chain issues, uh, shipping delays and so forth, um, some branches were able to um, get all the upgrades done, but um, so these are carry over from uh, fiscal year 21. Uh, to finish up the uh, security project. Um, and then $500,000 is for furniture refresh at the various city um, library locations. Um, so with the some of the fund balances that we were able to 
uh, save up and su uh, surplus from the last fiscal, the last two fiscal years, in a lot of COVID, um, you know, issues and uh, you know some things that we got from uh, the delays. We would like to uh, put about five hundred thousand dollars in furniture refresh um, to take care of our, you know, our furnitures, desks, tables, chairs that may have been duct taped for. Um, you know, on a temporary basis. So uh, Fasili and uh, Jared and his team will work on that to uh, refresh the branches. And 400,000, again, that's for a shared cost distribution from uh, Bookmobile, Bookmobile uh, project carryover, added positions and the Sacramento News and Review um, you know, building uh, upgrades. So any questions on expenditures? So hearing none, um, so when we met at, with the budget audit committee last week, um, the committee asked staff to uh, put together a list of unfunded capital needs or building maintenance needs uh, from both the city and the county side. Um, so staff is working with um, the city's personnel and county uh, reps to put a comprehensive list together and our plan is to bring it back to the board um, sometime by the end of this calendar year for, um, for a thorough analysis and presentation to, uh, to the full authority board. So um, just wanted to point that out and uh, let you know that that report will be uh, coming uh, forward soon. Um, and then on... So moving on to position control. Um, so this is our adopted position control back in May. And uh, we're recommending to up the positions by 15 FTEs um, to a total of uh, 314 positions. Um, so these positions include um, reclassifications, um, 13 new added positions, and two grand funded positions, which are uh, mainly temporary placeholders. Uh, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll budget the monies when we get when we receive grants or when we anticipate that there'll be uh, uh, grant funding uh, to come in. So, so these are mainly temporary uh, placeholders, so that we have the, those positions in place for um, for grants and uh, position needs. Um, so, this organization organizational realignment is mainly to. Um, you know, help support system-wide leadership roles, uh, success, succession planning, and opportunities for career pathways. Um, in the end, hopefully this will better meet the needs of the library and also um, the community needs in general. So that's, um, that's mainly why these uh, positions are being uh, recommended. And I believe I, um, not IT, but HR is in discussion with uh, local 39 to, um, you know, keep them informed and make sure that um, uh, you know both uh, staff, management, and the local thirty nine are on the same page with uh, with that discussion. Um, so, lastly, the fee structure. Um, when we went to the budget audit committee last week, uh, we recommended no changes, but um, there's a minor change that we'd like to uh, recommend for adoption. So. Um, and this is mainly to resume uh, collecting fees for any damaged material um, in light of COVID-19 closures and uh, the hardships and issues that um, our patrons were having. We, we went ahead and suspended um, you know, fees due to COVID, but we, we would like to restore that fee uh, going forward. So um, that's the only change in uh, the uh, fee structures. Um, everything else is still the same. And as you recall, we we eliminated all fines um, back in May when the board adopted the budget. So um, again, really no other changes except for this minor um, change here on the uh, resuming the fees for damaged material. Um, so that that includes my report. Um, again, this this is mainly just a true up of our May budget to updating numbers and um, get us back to. Um, the yeah, September final budget. So, Great. Please. Well, thank you very much, Johnny. Appreciate all your work and all of the team's work to put this budget together. 
Uh, first, let me go over to the clerk here. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any members from the public signed up to speak on this item? No, we don't. Great, thank you. Let me bring us back to the board. Uh, any comments or questions from the board on this? Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the budget with the suggested minor change of the fee for undamaged materials. I move that we adopt a budget. Thank you. It's been moved Thanks, by Board Member Schaefer. Is there a second? I can't sing Allen. Has been seconded by uh, Mayor Bobby, Bobby Singh Allen. Is there any further comments or discussion from the board? Uh, seeing none, uh, let me go ask the clerk to call the roll. Angelique Ashby. Yes. Bobby Singh Allen. Yes. Donna Tolley. Aye. Eric Guerra. Aye. Garrett Gatewood. Aye. Kevin Spees. Aye. Mai Vang. Yes. Patrick Kennedy. Rich Desmond. Aye. Rick Jennings. Aye. Sue Frost. Aye. Tim Schaefer. Aye. And Karina Talamantes. Aye. Motion passes with 12 members present. Great. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our uh, action items for the day. I know we are on, uh, we're going to lose a few folks here at four o'clock. So we have a couple of the announcements to make uh, before we lose folks. Um, one uh, uh, is by board member Frost. And then uh, second, uh, also by um, our uh, librarian here regarding our uh, adult education graduation. So let me turn it over to uh, board member Frost and then we'll go to Rivka here. I just wanted to invite everyone to come out to the Orangevale ribbon cutting and opening of the new Orangevale library. And um, we're really excited. It's going to be quite a celebration. We're going to bring, I'm pretty sure we have a commitment from all the past supervisors that have advocated for a better library in Orangevale over decades. And so they're all going to be there um, because they were a part of making this happen too in their time. And so um, hope you'll all come out and join us on Saturday. What time? I, I think it's um, Saturday at noon. Ripka? At noon. Yeah. noon. Yeah. So if you have any extra time, I know everyone's really busy. We would love to see you there. Great, thank you. Uh, look, looking forward to those who can make it. Uh, Rivka. And then Thursday night, you should have all received an invitation to our long delayed career online high school graduation. We're combining uh, two years worth of graduates. It will be in William Land Park uh, Amphitheater uh, in Sacramento. It begins at 5.30. And we really hope you can stop by and say hello. Kathy, do you want to add anything? This is the best thing that you will do next week. I will say that because there is nothing like an adult receiving an accredited high school diploma and the, the family pride and personal pride that goes along with that. It, it really, it, yeah, it really is. What If you haven't been to one, I very much encourage you to try and come by. It's next Thursday, the 30th at 530. We will be chasing the sun since due to COVID restrictions, we needed to have it outside and we wanted to make sure that I believe it's 19 graduates that are walking and the people that choose to walk um, in their cap and gown, their normally very supported by their family and it is truly a celebration and it's only an hour long. So come on down. It'll it's be quick. Well, well, thank you, Kathy. And I can attest to that. Uh, our family participated in my mother's uh, GED high school diploma graduation uh, when she turned 50. Great way to turn 50. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, if there are no more reports, ideas, or questions from the board members, then uh, we are adjourned at 4.02 p.m. Have a good one. Thank you.